Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Thank you for joining me today with the, for this watercolor lesson. Be sure to hit the like button if you find value in this tutorial and be sure to subscribe to be notified for upcoming videos. Today we're going to paint a colorful forest and the materials are listed here and in the description below for you. When I start off this painting, I'm going to work wet on wet. So I'm going to wet down my watercolor paper and I am just wetting down the sky portion, not the field below. And I want to make sure I have a little bit of shine to it. When you look at my paper on that upper right, you can see that there is some shine on it. And that's because the water is soaking in. I'm using Holbein paints. This is Aurelion. And then I'm also going to use opera and then permanent yellow orange for the sky and all I'm doing is laying those down uh, in a circle fashion and I'm going to tilt my paper so I can have these colors blend by themselves. I'm using a marine blue plus an ultramarine blue down below here for the other parts of the sky. And I'm just going to put those on the outside of the other colors uh, and I'm going to blend these. And how I'm going to do that is by tilting my paper and I dabbed up a little bit of that white sun because I want to keep that dry and I don't want uh, my sun to get lost. As I'm tilting this, what's going to happen is the colors will mix by themselves. And when it's completely dry, you can see this jump that just took place. Look how light those colors are once the paper dries. So when you are painting and you're doing a vibrant sky like that, I am a little reserved. I like lighter tones. And so you can be really bold and put more paint on there and put thicker paint on yours tilt it and then once you get it to move around and mix together by itself let it dry so i moved into painting these trees and i'm one where i like to sketch out then darken up and i would recommend using a little bit of neutral and ultramarine blue that's what i use there and as i move forward i'm going to use these two colors but i'm going to make it I'm going to make some of the other tree trunks a little bit more colorful to match the painting. To paint my next set of trees, I added a little bit of alizarin crimson along with my ultramarine blue. This gives me a purple. I can use also permanent violet in there. This is Holbein paint in order for me to get those vibrant colors. So I'm starting to add in these other colors to make the trees colorful versus like these black tones. The other thing I'm going to do is add in some marine blue and the ultramarine blue deep and add a second layer into these trees to make them more colorful. But you can see the ones that are further away and the ones that are closest to me are going to be a darker tone than the ones that are in the background and closer to the sun rays.
I'm adding trees that are in the distance, so they're further back from me in the landscape. And these are gonna be closer to the sun rays as we were looking through this forest. So I'm using a little bit of permanent yellow orange and I used a tiny bit of orange in there and I added that in there just so I could uh, create a sketch of these trees and I don't want it thick paint because I want these to be more transparent and misty looking. I'm going to create some leaves towards the background, towards the distance, and I'm using a lot of water. And I'm, my paintbrush is not sopping wet, but what I'm doing is adding a little bit of a red tone along with uh, my pinkish tone, and I'm just sketching in lightly some of the leaves that I might be able to see in this misty morning. So because it's way in the distance, I do not want a lot of detail. I just want to give you the impression and let you gently see that there are some trees that are way back there and the sun shining through them. Now I'm just darkening intentionally some of my trees that are closest to me in this picture. And because it's away from that sunny field, it's gonna have some nice dark tones in it. So I'm using a little bit of neutral and a little bit of ultra, ultramarine blue in there, but it's a lot more neutral than it is anything else. Now you can just follow along with some of the colors that I'm painting these trees that are in this painting. Some of them are going to be a darker, that neutral color. And remember, don't have a lot of paint, just uh, keep it lightweight, which means you've got more water in there than you do paint, uh, but you don't want it sopping wet. I wanna be able to sketch with this, 
Then I'm going to switch over and I'm going to go back to some of my yellows and my oranges for some of the other trees. So you could just follow along and just sketch in some of these details and we'll see how this turns out. I, I would love to hear how yours is turning out too. Comment below. Uh, subscribe if you've not had an opportunity to do that. If you are getting value, make sure you smash that like button and uh, we will continue on with this lesson. Now my paper below is pretty dry and all I'm doing is wetting a certain section like there's another field back there and this is just part of the picture it's just the field going backwards and I want to define that a little bit more I want people to be able to see that and this is where I'm using more of a teal type of blue mixed with that ultramarine again, again so I'm just using the same colors but I'm keeping it a little bit brighter. The sun is shining back there and it's not gonna be dull. It's gonna have this uh, pretty mist to it. And then to soften it up, so I create that mist to keep it that way, I have water on my paintbrush and what I did was swipe down with a little bit of water and a clean brush, I swiped down to wipe up some of that blue so I could keep this mist going. And that's what I'm doing right there, is just kind of dabbing it up a little bit. Okay, at this point, I feel like I've lightly sketched out my trees and I feel like I've done a good job as far as getting an idea of where I want these trees. So that's where I will go back in and I'll add more paint. This is thicker paint. It's not just paint, but it's thicker. I want these trees now to stand up. I'm trying to give it some definition. So I'm gonna use the same colors I've already mentioned to you, alizarin crimson, the permanent yellow, uh, deep, and I might be using some purples in here as we go on too, but all I'm gonna do is continue to define these. I want them to be colorful, I want them to be bright. I'm basically playing. This is one of my play sessions, so I can just try out some new methods, and this is what I came up with for us today. We're gonna let the top section dry, and I'm gonna to start to add in some sap green down below. I want my bottom not very detailed. I want it sloppier. So I'm gonna throw some color in. I'm working with a lot more water in my paint. I'm gonna be adding in some burnt umber, some raw sienna, this sap green, 
and a few other colors and what I'm doing is just trying to build in a little bit of light of where that light might hit and you can see some sunshine and I want some uh, darkness because we're in the darker part of the forest so I need some dark browns in there uh, to stand out and show that it's like we've got shadows in here. I like the way this is developing so I've moved into putting some hookers green in here and that's a nice rich tone uh, green and I usually add a tiny bit of uh, ultramarine blue deep in that in order to darken it up but you can see my paper is shiny it's very wet I'm just going to continue to dab this paint in I dab until I hit a place where I really like it Right now I'm adding in raw sienna. I love that color. Yellow ochre works good. Quinacridone yellow. No, quinacridone gold. That's another uh, paint color to try. Uh, quinacridone gold is just this beautiful, uh, it's a yellowish tone. But if you put lots of layers in, it actually would turn more of a brown. And it granulates. Granulates means that when I put paper, I put uh, paint onto paper that has water on it, it's gonna look like the, it's something separates, it's got texture to it. And that's because the pigment actually splits apart a little bit and settles into the paper. So granulation is something that is absolutely beautiful in your watercolor paintings. And you have to teach yourself to have patience and to let the paint do its job. You don't wanna push the paint around and have it do everything. Sometimes you need to put it on there. Let it mix on its own. Let it separate so you can see how that turns out. Now I basically i am going back in now into adding another section of trees where I want it to be seen. So this area, I'm gonna use a little bit of raw sienna mixed in with some of the uh, permanent yellow orange. And I'm keeping it super, super light. I'm actually grabbing a tiny bit of a sap green in here. I'm gonna start doing the branches that are closer to me. The closer the branches are to me, I'm gonna to have to add in darker colors, which is good. Um, if I add dark in, you're going to be able to see the beautiful light that's way back there in the distance. So I'm using some of my browns and my greens in order to paint the leaves that are close to us. We're standing deep in this forest. We're in the place where it's darker. And so the branches that we see are going to be dark even when we're looking at them and seeing that bright sun behind it.
Now I'm making my black tones interesting in here. I'm adding another layer onto this tree. Well, I've actually am using like a neutral mixed with permanent violet. And whenever you are going to put blacks in, blacks are not really blacks. There's blue tones in there. They might be a lizard and crimson, which is a red tone in there. And I like to add in these other colors right now. The violet would work really well in there. So I can create that violet by using neutral and using permanent violet. Or if you don't have that, use ultramarine blue. That's your regular deeper blue and add pink, which I have as opera. Or even if I want it muddier and darker, I would use ultramarine blue mixed with alizarin. That's gonna give you a dark permanent, uh, purple as well. So just play around with your palette, play around with your different colors. But when you look at this painting now, you can see how we have uh, this bright sun in the back. We've got these beautiful misty trees and we've developed some of the mid branches where you see this brownish sienna uh, in the middle on the top and there's a little bit of leaves i'm not going to change that too much and i put some leaves at the top on the far right and the far left and those are a darker green you can use hooker's green with a little bit of neutral something like that so as i'm letting that dry i'm going down below i don't want to add in a lot of detail down here so what I'm doing is simply putting in some grass blades. And while I did that, I actually took my brush, I don't have a lot of water on it, and I pushed the bristles down, I kind of spread them out, and it makes my brush look sloppy, like if there's not this beautiful point on it. Doing that allows me to have a brush that can create grass. It actually is pretty cool. So. You can try different things with your brushes and that definitely is one to try. So as I'm finishing up some of these branches, uh, try to stop yourself before you think it's done. Put it aside, wait till tomorrow, take a look at it, see what you think. Well, I decided that I would uh, splatter a little bit in here, uh, which is risky, but I just took a little bit of paint and then I tapped a few of the green um, like colors into there just to create these random speckles which I thought was pretty cool because if you're gonna have that show up even in the middle it looks like you've got these dark branches and there's these little tiny leaves that are popping out once I finish that I'm gonna go back in and just finalize some of the details on the trunks 
uh, on the leaves. I'm going to check the bottom of the painting and finish this out. You can see how I'm adding in just some final details. I want those tree trunks seen very well that they're right next to us. And the way to do that is to add in some of that neutral. And I'm adding that straight in now. I've got enough purples and lavenders in there to, you know, catch someone's eye. It's like, yeah, there are there is purple in there. So I'm gonna tap it off or I'm gonna uh, finish it off with some of these branches. And if you've enjoyed being with me today, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. Uh, that'll help me continue to grow. I don't earn anything right now off of these videos, but I am trying and your views really helps. And if you could hit like, be sure to give me any comments in the description. I wanna know what you're painting. I want to know what paints you're using, what paper you're using. I really love being with you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. I'm going to let you finish this out and be sure to look at the videos that I have added at to the end of this, um, this tutorial and also to check the ones that I've highlighted inside of the tutorial. And that'll give you some additional ones uh, to paint that are similar to this. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.